I have these plastic boxes that I need to machine on all four sides, and I'm looking for a way to automate this using a fourth axis and a custom vacuum fixture. I'm using a Stepcraft Q204 machine with an automatic tool changer. And the first thing that I need to do here is I have to load the machine's tool rack with all the tools I'm going to be using. And the vacuum fixture is actually using five different tools. And at this point, what I'm doing is I'm touching off every tool measuring the Z-height offset. And this is done automatically through a macro that we've created uh, for UCC and C on our machine. So I've got four different end mills in here. I've got uh, actually three end mills and two drill bits that we're using to make these vacuum pucks. The first thing I need to do is I need to put four quarter inch holes in my spoil board. These are gonna be for steel alignment pins because the vacuum puck is a two-sided operation. So I'm gonna mill the backside first and then flip it over and use the pins to align everything properly. I have my HDPE screwed down and I have it positioned roughly over where the four alignment pins are going to be. The position doesn't matter, it doesn't need to be perfect because I'm going to pocket out this center spot right now in the back. This is where it's going to mate up to the hub when I take the uh, three jaw chuck off the fourth axis. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put in four alignment pin holes on the back side here of the HDPE. So I'm going to put the steel dowel pins in and they're going to line up with the holes that I put already on the spoil board and that'll ensure my, my front side is aligned perfect to the back. A quick tool change puts the end mill back and grabs a M8 drill bit. We're going to put four holes in and then tap them for M8. This is going to allow us to fasten the vacuum fixture to the back plate on the fourth axis. Now that the back side is finished machining, I'm going to remove the screws that I have fastening the uh, HDP to my spoil board. Then I'm going to insert four steel quarter inch dowel pins. These are a half inch long. Then I'm going to flip the HDP over and I'm going to align the steel dowel pins with the four holes I originally put in my spoil board. That'll ensure that when I machine the front of the vacuum fixture, it's going to be perfectly aligned to the back. And I'm going to screw the HDP back down. A quick tool change, returning the M8 drill bit and picking up a 1 8 inch drill bit. We're going to use this bit to drill four alignment pin holes for 1 8 inch steel pins. These pins will align to the holes that are in the back side of the plastic blocks to make sure that the box is in the correct spot every single time. Another tool change, we're going to pick up an eighth inch end mill. This time we're going to come in and now what we have to do is where the alignment pin holes are in the back side of the box, the, the plastic is actually proud of the bottom of the box a little bit. So in order for the box to sit flush against the vacuum gasket, we need to create these four uh, pocketed corners. So I'm coming down 1.5 millimeters just to remove some extra material so that the vacuum fits tightly against the flat surface of the bottom of the box. So I've got four of these that are, are being put in. And then what we're going to do is immediately using the same end mill, start pocketing out the center of the vacuum chamber. So I've got a 10 millimeter square in the center that's going to be left uh, and that's just there to support the center of the box so that when the vacuum's turned on it doesn't cave in the uh, bottom of the box. It's going to rest against that center, uh, 10 millimeter center square. So we're going to run a few tool pass here. We're going to pocket this out and clearing it down to a about a quarter of an inch. One final tool change, picking up an Oflu Amana quarter inch end mill that's designed specifically for plastic. This end mill does a great job uh, and leaves an amazing finish. We're going to use this end mill to cut the perimeter of the vacuum fixture out from the HDPE. You can see the stream of chips that come off this end mill. It just, it cuts so nicely in this material.
We cut through in three passes. The final pass, we're leaving four quarter inch long tabs just to keep the vacuum fixture in place. I'm using a chisel to cut the tabs off to remove the vacuum fixture from the HDPE and then I'll use a knife to cut the tabs off from the part. I put an M8 tap in a cordless drill and I'm using that to cut the threads in the four holes that I drilled previously using the CNC machine. You just want to make sure you hold the drill vertically. I'm going to test fit the M8 bolt, make sure everything threads in nice and it's going to hold securely. Now I'm going to put it in a fixture and I'm going to drill a hole. This is going to be for the vacuum inlet. I'm going to tap the hole with a cordless drill and then I'm going to go ahead and put a 6mm push to connect in there and that's what we're going to use to connect the vacuum fixture to our vacuum pump. Now I'm putting the eighth inch steel pins in. These are the alignment pins that we drilled the holes for earlier. They're going to line up the uh, plastic box to make sure it's in the same spot every single time. Now I'm putting in the quarter inch rubber cord. It's actually a mixture of foam and rubber. It's really soft and compressible and when you push it all the way down to the bottom of the channel, it protrudes from the top surface of the vacuum fixture about a sixteenth of an inch. When you apply vacuum, it's going to compress in the channel and hold the part solid against the surface of the vacuum fixture. You need to make sure you push it in evenly all the way around, and we also need to make sure that where the two ends meet, there's no gap, so you want them to push tightly against each other so there's no vacuum leak. Now I'm going to test fit the box over the pins. I want to make sure that everything fits. You can see where the recesses are in the corners. Uh, so when I squeeze it, the box fits nicely. Now I'm going to hook up my vacuum line and we're going to put the box on the fixture. We're using a Robin Air 5 CFM oil vacuum pump. You can see now that when we push this down, it's it's solid, and I've got a vacuum gauge on there that reads we're pulling 27 inches of mercury. So we have a near-perfect vacuum on there. That That's not going to go anywhere. It's a solid attachment to the vacuum fixture. I need to remove the three M8 bolts that hold the three-jaw chuck to the back plate. It's easy to do, but you have to rotate the... Uh, chuck so that the bolts will clear the case. The chuck might be stuck onto the back plate so a simple tap through one of the clearance holes will free it up. Now we can place the new vacuum fixture to the back plate and get the M8 bolt lined up on it. And we'll do the same for the other remaining bolts. Now that it's all set, I'm just doing a 360 degree rotation to make sure everything looks good and the bolts clear. Now we're going to mount the box to it with the vacuum turned on. And as you can see here, it's really on there solid. I'm going to rotate the box. 270 degrees, which is what it'll do when it's running the job. I want to make sure that the airline doesn't get snagged anywhere. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to zero it back out, which is going to rotate it in the opposite direction where it started. I had to make custom spacers to get the fourth axis up off the bed so that the corners of the box would clear the bed when it rotates. And here's the vacuum fixture mounted and here's the alignment pins the rubber gasket and the hole in the center is where the vacuum inlet is now it's time to start running the job 
what you'll see is that the gantry is going to move to the rear of the machine or to the right three inches and then move into place and it's going to cut out the hole on side one. It does it in two passes. Uh, the box material is pretty thick so we're not cutting all the way through the first time and then as we come down we're cleaning up the, the hole slightly and cutting out any remaining fragments from the part. Now the gantry will move again to the right or to the rear of the machine, three and a half inches. It's going to rotate 90 degrees and come in and drill the two holes for side two. Then it'll move three and a half inches out of the way again, rotate another 90 degrees, and it's going to cut the two circular holes for side three. Again, we're going to do this in two passes. And then we're going to get ready to cut the final side. Again, gantry moves out of the way and we rotate the final 90 degrees. We're going to come back and drill two additional holes. The gantry one last time will move out of the way. And now we're going to send the A-axis or the rotary axis back to zero, which is going to spin it in the opposite direction so that we uncoil the airline hose. And now we're back where we started. For more information on this project or any of the other Stepcraft products, please reach out to us at 203-556-1856 or visit our website at www.stepcraft.us.